Welcome everyone back to Pommy and Oz. Hope you're all doing really well. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, turn the notification bell on. It does help the channel. We're smashing them out at the moment. About to hit 4,100. That is insane. We are on the road to 10K. So it's a huge task. We're going to do it though. I know we can do it. But we're here with the VFL wrap. So let's get straight into it. And it was a cold day out here in Werribee in my neck of the woods. It was a real seesaw affair. We fell short by six points. Um, it was a real, real vintage, like, stately game. If you watch a lot of the VFL, um, I've got a bit of a punch on for it. You see games like this all the time, games that are real heavily contested. They're physical. There's tackles flying in. It's hard to see it. And the game was really even Stevens uh, until midway through the third where Cowton did turn it on. But Werribee pegged them back. It was blustery um, as it was. Um, real highlight and a testament to Werribee's structure. They're a real solid side. And uh, they'll surprise a few people, you know, as one of the standalone sides. Um, their ability to counter punch in the first half really kept them in it. And it was an interesting affair, really, because we were outworked, particularly in the fourth. Um, you really saw that they turned it on very quickly. They got a cluster of goals. And unfortunately, the boys just couldn't quite respond and get up um, versus them. And there was a few players there you could see returning from injury who did stand out. But Testament to Werribee. They were, in my opinion, it's arguably the better side. Thomas Gribble's one of the better players you'll see in the VFL. He really pulled the strings for them. Um, they've got some real good players. Uh, Kai De Class as well. He's He's got a bit of De Class uh, about him. The former Melbourne boy. Um, whether he swings down back or whether he's up forward, the, the kid can play footy. Let's be honest. He... Uh, he, he seems to be everywhere. He works really hard. And that really did stretch the Blues. Um, and it was a little bit of a lack at times of of nous, I thought. Game management was poor. In that third, they really did switch off at the start of the fourth. And they never really responded. You were looking for them to close it down. So it was disappointing in the end, um, in the way for me, that Werribee won it. And credit to Werribee, though. Very good side. And... Definitely a side that I, I enjoy watching, uh, Werribee. But let's get into the players. Uh, big JS, Jack S, JSOS. He played down the back uh, for the majority of this tie. Um, ending up with 11 kicks, four handballs, six tackles. Um, you know you're going to get pressure from Jack. Four marks, two inside 50s, five rebound 50s. Rating of six out of ten. He was really solid. Um you can see he's getting used to that position, um, attacks the ball well. Uh, a very interesting one because I think when you look at him, I, I try and see if they're playing him down back, where would they play him? Um, he's not ahead of Kemp. There will be a point that Cowton have to look at McGovern. Do they re-sign him? I don't think they will. So that needs replacing. Is that a lucky Cowan? For me, the way that the structure at Cowan works, it will be Cowan. They want a good ball user who's direct. Jason did his, ha um, his chances no harm, though. It was an okay game. It was an okay game. Um, I don't really see the merit of him playing down back. I think what Cowan need down the back, they're 10 a penny in the draft. So are the high half forwards, but I think that that is an area that we definitely need. You saw Jack Martin's eight-touch game of how that can change how your forward structure works. Jack probably doesn't have the high ceiling that Jack does, but he does have the high floor that Jack doesn't have. So I would like to see him in the forward line, see what it is, um, see what it's about. But very solid from Jack, six out of ten, can't complain, no qualms from me. Jesse Motlop, um, five kicks, 14 handballs. A lot of the chains he got involved in. Real impressive factor was the tackles, um, eight tackles, and a lot of them were inside 50. Two clearances, one goal, two inside 50s, six out of 10. 
I watch Jack Martin and I, then I look at Jesse Motlop and I think that that might be an avenue to go down. A lot of the teams are playing a more smaller high half forward and we know Voss isn't shy of playing that. A couple of games in the VFL, like three or four, and really get him to cement that type of role. He had a couple of pinch hits in the midfield, which is his strength from when he was in the waffle. Um, I, I really like this kid. I haven't given up on him. I know a few people have jumped off. Definitely needs the VFL time just to really accrue what he's about for me. Just really cement a role. This is an interesting one because see Jack Silvani. I feel like Motlop doesn't quite understand what he is yet. And we're coming on to a few other guys as well in this series that we'll talk about. So he's definitely someone that I really want to see just go up a gear, to be honest. Then we've got Lockie O'Brien. Um, five out of ten for me. Ten kicks, four handballs, one tackle, three marks, three inside 50s, one rebound. Offered us kind of nothing, and it's quite disappointing. And it's actually upsetting me a little bit because... I like Lockie O'Brien. I, I do. I've I've met him. He's a great guy. And I've always been a supporter of him because we know I like a wing. I was really happy when Ollie Hollands took his spot because I thought, well, O'Brien has been that guy that has been knocked before and he comes out fighting. And I'm not quite seeing it. He's kind of plodding through it. And that's, I don't mean to cast aspersions of him, but he, he, he's playing like a guy that has resigned to not get back in. And he should be banging the ball, ball down. And this was really a game for Lockie. The ball was played quite a bit out that wing. And I was looking for him to take the game on and be a bit energetic. And I didn't quite see it from him. I did see it in stages from Motlop, but I didn't see it from Lockie. And that's disappointing for me because I, I, I think there's an area there that... That, that wing position for me is one of the few areas at this football club that I think you could make a name for yourself and a reputation. And it was disappointing. Uh, Jack Carroll, he really did thrive without Dow there. And I've been saying this for a while that we've got to find this kid a position. Now he's back from injury. And now Dow's mixing it with the seniors. This is only good for Jack. And I like Jack's game. It wasn't spectacular, but he worked hard. He worked in everything. He was the conduit. He came down back to get the marks. He worked a high, high half forward. You can see it was his first game from injury because he didn't quite have the running power and the legs and see the game out. But it was all in all pretty solid. And I'm really excited. He's definitely one to watch for mine in the next couple of weeks. Zach Fisher, new roll down the back. Whether that's a full change, there's a lot of rumours that he's looking to leave. I don't know. If he's looking to leave, I'm not too sure why you play him down the back, uh, unless it's to work on his defensive capabilities. And um, The two tackles, 13 handballs, 16 kicks, four marks, two clearances. Um, did float back up high half forwards in the first quarter and the fourth. They kind of switched him about. Um, fair play to Zach that it didn't look like it affected him which he does quite a lot of players where you see them switch them. He 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 did that quite a plum. I felt it affected Jack a little bit when they did it, but it didn't affect Zach. Um, he was pretty good. Um, I liked his conduit role. Um, the way I'd describe it was kind of like an Audi Saad is what they were trying to... An Audi dog, sorry, of getting him to be that conduit to get in the midfield. I didn't mind it. I would have liked to see him take the game on a little bit more, but all in all, new role, um, a good pass mark. And he was involved in everything, particularly when he got higher up the ground. I, I do think out and miss a trick that I do think he's a midfielder, which then creates that other problem is that I understand why he's not in the side. I don't think he's a forward. So I do like the fact that going down back, it's going to improve his defensive prowess a little bit, which is probably my big issue with Zaki. Um, he doesn't get involved defensively enough, so he's going to learn the hard way. Um, Lockie Cowan, I really enjoyed his game. I really did. Ten kicks, six handballs, two tackles, five marks, three of them intercept, clearance two, inside 50s one, three rebound 56 out of 10. For me, moving forward, if I was picking the team, which I'm not, Mitch McGovern would be out at some stage and we just say, okay, we know he's going. 
and we give this guy the role, which allows you then to keep Jim Cotter there. And this guy's got the body for it. Real good attack of the ball. That kick is a weapon, is a weapon. And it's something that not many, I, I'd say no one has that kick in the back line that he does, which I think gets Carlton into trouble a little bit because I think all of them, even the best, just kick it into the safe zone. This guy's, when he kicks it, it's so safe. It's almost Switzerland. It's that safe. So I, I, I'm I a big fan of Lockie. Um, six out of 10. Should have been more. Um, there was a few defensive lapses, but I really like his endeavour and his attack. And that's a problem with Carlton up until this week. Uh, someone to actually give us something from down the back. Georgie Hewitt, good to see him back. Seven kicks, 17 handballs, nine tackles, two marks, five clearances, two inside 50s. It was an eight out of 10. It was a good game. You can see he was a level above. Now, there's a caveat to this. I don't think he's ready for AFL football, though, yet. Because he did that against, with, with all the respect in the world to Werribee, they wouldn't win a game in the AFL, right? So all due respect to them. That's no knock to them. There is levels to this game. Although it was strong in the centre, I think if you add him to that midfield, it suddenly becomes too one-paced. And then wonderful rotations we had last week, you'll lose four of them and we'll go back to just five people rotating through there. I think for me, for Hewitt to come in, he's got to bang the door down and really create an effort, really dominate in the clearances. And he was good and he linked up well and he hit his targets well, particularly by hand, took the contact like you do. Give him a couple of dead games, get him into form. Again, the fixture in this country is fucked. How have we got a buy when the seniors have got a buy? And it happens for other teams as well. Absolutely ridiculous. Teams should be playing in the buy VFL so we can do this because teams like Eagles, teams like us who have got players returning from injury, other teams as well that are in there, Collingwood, Essendon, perfect time just to put a bit more game time into them to stop injuries down the track. So a ridiculous thing. But George was very good. Um, I still think, though, just watching it, it wasn't as clear-cut Donovan as I'd expect from him. Harry Lemmy, I was really disappointed with Lemmy because last week he started to show something. It wasn't really the day for a guy that's got his facets, to be fair. But he did try throughout the game. Um, they didn't quite hit him. Probably affected that the wings didn't really provide as much. Entries wise, um, on Lockie's side, and that's the side he leads down. But all in all, he's developing, he's developing, and I do like the fact that he doesn't stop leading, which is good. Easily the best on ground by the length of Fleminton straight. Jackson Bins, he'll be rubbing his hands together like this. That Cottrell's out for a week. Um, in my opinion, Cottrell is the Audi Bins. Uh, so I'm excited. 22 kicks, 10 handballs, two tackles, seven marks. Works so hard defensively again. One clearance, seven inside 50s, six rebound 50s. Should be a 10, but we don't hand them out on this show. Absolutely froth, Jackson. Absolutely froth. Real, real, real good game from Jackson. Dangerous kicks. He hits them areas. If we can produce what we did against Gold Coast in a forward system where we're actually at the fall of the ball, bins will change your life. I'll, I'll say that now. Lewis Young, 13 kicks, four handballs, 11 marks, one inside 57, rebound 50s. Four out of 10, though. I felt a lot of them marks were very easy. I felt like he didn't attack the ball. I wanted to see from Lewis in this game, because he got bodied a few times, a couple of goals kicked on him, to really dictate that area. And this is what I'm looking for. I'm a little bit harsh on Hewitt and a little bit harsh on Lewis Young. These guys have got to dictate, right? Because they're playing in key roles for the seniors that when it goes wrong, it's game over. It's game over. And for me, watching the bat line this week, when it's a bit smaller... If you're going to tell me another toll's coming into there, you've got to give me a reason. And I didn't quite see it. I thought it was just a really solid game. I've seen Sam Durden do this every week in VFL, right? 
And Lewis, I expect better. I expect him to be like, right, this is my back line. I own this back line. This is my domain. I didn't quite feel it. He should be the weetering down that line. Josh Honey, another four out of ten. It's a tough one, this, because I felt this was the game here. This was a game that was on there where Motlop was working so hard to really work up the ground. That's Josh Honey's game as well. Felt like when we needed him, he kind of checked out. No goals, one behind. Inside 50s, three. Some of them were atrocious as well. Um, okay, around the stoppages, I'll give him that. Um, decent tackle pressure as well. But when you see what Fogg does to versus Honey, you can see the difference. I'll leave it at that. Hudson O'Keefe, um, six out of ten. Uh, really battled hard. And it has to be said that the the rooks um, at this place, you've got Kobe and Ann and Jack Boyd, Josh Porter, um, big Kobe as well. He's He's played a bit, 22. Do you know what I mean? He's He's been there. Um, good test for him as well. It was a good test because he's, he's, he's a unit. He is the old Ocean Grubs boy. He is very talented. And I thought this was a good little battle, good little battle for Mr. Hudson. And I thought he did well. Um, he had Blake and Harry as company to help him, but I thought he did the majority of it. And I, I was really impressed with him. Really impressed. I thought he took his goal well. His work around the ground was okay as well. I loved his positioning. He looked a bit mobile this week as well. I like the way he slot forward. He looks quite dangerous um, in that system. There is something to work with there. And I was really impressed with Hudson. Although the numbers don't scream fantastic, I loved how he used his body. I loved how he tried to dictate the flow of the game. So hats off to Hudson. Really good game, my friend. Really good game. Big Dommy A. Um, always will love Dom. He's always going to be my boy, but again, same every week. I need to see him take the game on. Like he gets the opportunities, and I'm looking for him to do it. And it's like he's holding himself back. And there has to come a point where he gives himself because this is not a given. And he's a really great story. He's a really great kid, and he's a sponge of learning. He's a sponge of learning, but. Play to your instincts, and it's. It, I don't know if it's coached out, it's a confidence thing. We saw it a couple of years ago that he was really starting to do it. We're not seeing it this year. Um, big effort needed from Dom in the back half of the year for mine. Big effort. That is the VFL wrap. Let me know what you thought. If you got down there, sorry I couldn't attend. Um, you know, I had some stuff on uh, with the family this weekend, so look after yourself. Much love. Thank you very much for the support. Congratulations to the Aussies as well. Good win. Good knock. Uh, well done, Cummings. And big Gary did well there. Um, over to Lords. But look after yourself. Much love. Pom out. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's hella bad